hello friends in this video we'll be going to some of the basic questions which are needed during the interview or when you have started learning the APM so the first question which is what is basically the APM is APM you can say it's a tool which is used for automating of the mobile devices okay when we talk about selenium selenium only automates the browsers that is desktop browsers but when we talk about APM APM automates the mobile apps now when we say apps it can be any app that it can be your browsers inside your mobile it's the apps you download from the internet or it can be the pre-installed apps that is your settings your calling application your messaging application so if we talk in short APM automates everything which is in your mobile if you talk about apps it's hybrid native web whatever it is APM is a very smart tool it automates the everything okay APM also automates the iOS and the Android platforms. It does not support the Windows. It is only for the Android and iOS platform. The next question which comes out the abilities for the APM or we say why the APM is so vast recognized. The first we can say that the APM supports the languages like Java Ruby. Okay. The next part is you can make a script if the applications uh, and the identification of the elements are same in the in your Android as well as your iOS application. You can write a script and that script can run on your Android as well as your iOS. Okay. As I have told before, it, it automates your the whole mobile, whether it's any app, hybrid, native or web app. It's cross platform and in simple ways we can say the APM is built on top of the selenium so if you know selenium the back end of the APM is the selenium so if you have been using or working with selenium APM is a nice uh, it's a very easy for you because the working of selenium is just uh, sorry the working of the APM is as working of the selenium is okay the next benefit is if you're working with the Android you don't need the APK as well like they are pre-installed apps which the mobile manufacturers usually give you can automate them as well we don't have the APK file APK files are uh, you can say is a software or exe file in the simple terms you can say exe file on which clicking you can load and install an app on your mobile so that is the APK file so the best part of the AVM is you don't have the APK file but the app is installed on a mobile you still can automate it okay the next the prerequisites it's a APM has a long list of prerequisites and when we talk about the installation of APM on your on your devices on your desktop or the iOS we say the installation and configuration of APM correctly usually takes a T20 20 I can say at 20% of the time of learning of the APM it's a very tedious task it usually take two or three days if, if you don't have any help it will roughly be taking about two or three days time of yours for installation and co properly configuring the APM okay so if you're struggling while installation of the APM guys it's normal <laughs> actually it installation of APM has usually have a long list of pre-request uh, like first you need to have the .NET trick uh, .NET framework installed in your system. The another is with Java. You must have the Eclipse, Selenium, TestNG jars, or additional jars you will be needing if you are working with the Maven or TestNG reports, and file, and the sector. All these jar files. Your Java home path must be set. APM download APM from the APM website. Also, you need if you're working with the Android, you need the Android ASDK also installed on the system, and it's a big amount of uh, memory consumed on your system. Also, its path must be set on the environmental variables. The jars should be downloaded, the APM client jars as well as the JSON jars. Okay, and the mobile you will need connecting to your. Uh, uh, laptops for the automation you also need their drivers so that your system can recognize your mobiles okay so it's a long list 
or we can say pre request for using of the APM or it's good we have been uh, seeing what's good about APM why is the best now there are some limitations if we talk about APM though they are very less but still they do exist the first one is that APM does not recognize the image comparison if you have been working with the QTP and other two paid tools you know you know that when we are stuck we generally switch to APM con uh, comparison though the APM comparison is very slow during the execution of the test cases but it helps when we are stuck but APM does not support any ability or uh, inbuilt library for image comparison though they are workarounds uh, but APM does not support those also the APM does not support the version less than 4.1 so if you have the devices on which you need to test with having the Android uh, version 4.1 or the API level 17, then APM is not tool for you. You have to go with cell Android. Okay. The another thing is APM is a new tool. Uh, there is a less number of blogs available in the internet. Plus the documentation of the APM is not so good. Okay. So when you are stuck, uh, you have to do a lot of R&D because the community of the APM is not so good at this time though it has been improved recently very good but uh, still it have weakness if we talk about the other tools tutorials are less okay and the main drawback is that configuration of the APM which I have talked before for the Android and iOS okay uh, when we are generally working with the APM what the common thinking is if you have installed the APM, configured on the APM, then don't touch it. Don't touch any libraries. Don't touch. Don't uh, upgrade any libraries. Don't upgrade the APM as well. Keep it as it is and continue using the APM. This is the common thing uh, when you're working with the APM. Hopefully, in the next uh, versions of the APM, it becomes more and more stable. Okay. So, if we have talked about the limitations, these are all the limitations. Okay. And uh, let's see. What's the DOM structure? Uh, how to find the DOM element or the XPath using the APM? It's simple like for iOS, we use the Apple instrument, UI instrumentation which is provided by the Apple guys. And for Android, uh, as I've talked about, if you want to automate the versions 4.1 below, then you have to go with Cell Android Google instrumentations for it. And if the Android version is 4.2 and above, then Google UI Automator, okay, by which you can find the elements or these X parts in the mobile. Okay, for iOS it's UI Automation, and for Android it's UI UI Automator. Okay, now let's a short description or the design concept of the APM. When we say actually the APM, APM is not a tool. First of all. Most of the guys say Selenium also a tool, but Selenium is a set of APIs. Similarly, API is a set of APM. APM is a server. It's an HTTP server which is written on Node.js platform. Okay, so it creates the drivers that is iOS and Android sessions using JSON wire protocol. Okay, so APM is the server, HTTP server which is built on Node.js and which communicates or makes sessions using JSON wire protocol okay so that's why we need Node.js installed on a system on which the APM is running also we need to download the JSON wire protocol jar okay and and how it co uh, communicates okay APM communicates with HTT responses from the mobile mobile to APM APM to your desktop and whatever that you are using okay so this is the short description regarding the design of the APM. Now, which language does APM support? It's a long list. It supports Java, any language you name it, and the popular language, and it supports it. It supports Java, it supports Objective-C, it supports JavaScript. With Node.js, it supports PHP, Python, Ruby, C. Yeah, it's, it's long list. It supports, okay. Now, what is APM Inspector? Okay. Now, uh, we have seen that we can identify elements on a mobile for the Android UI automator and for uh, Apple it's UI automation. 
but APM itself provide a tool by which we can identify elements of the mobile. So that is known as APM inspector. Okay. Uh, frankly, for the Android, we are not using the APM inspector. We generally use the UI uh, automator provided by the Google. But for Apple, we generally go with the APM inspector. It's your choice, but this is how we have been following. Okay. Now, does APM have the same approach as WebDriver? Yes, it's definitely. You can say it's an advanced version of uh, WebDriver for mobile automation. Okay. Uh, the same concept you have been using in your web driver, the same concept you'll be using in an APM. APM to test web apps on mobile devices. Okay, yes, APM supports Chrome on Android and Safari on iOS. As I've told that it uh, automates the web app, uh, but uh, for APM it supports Chrome, also the Android default browser which comes with the Android, plus Safari on iOS, yeah. Okay, uh, Selenium drivers necessary for APN? Yes, the answer is yes. Uh, a short description uh, about what the source lab is. Okay, uh, normally people ask in the questions, in the interviews, and you must be aware actually for cross browser testing. Okay, uh, you have developed a script for the mobile, but you need to test it on the 10 particular devices. The first approach is either you should have the 10 devices because for the Android, so much simulation is not possible. Emulator and simulators. Okay, so either you have 10 real devices or, and it's not possible, daily new sets are coming. Uh, so it's not feasible for all the company to have one devices, uh, multiple same devices for every team and there are so many devices. Okay, so it's an N number. So what the source lab provides is provides the emulator for those devices. You just buy their space and you can run you can run the script on their server and they will provide you the result. Okay, so it's a uh, source lab is for cross platform testing. So these were, uh, were the basic questions normally asked in the interviews or you should be knowing when you are started learning with the APM. Okay, so if you need more information, uh, just hit my website www.apm-selenium.com you will find a lot of blog research there also you can uh, get a whole complete course for this uh, APM okay thank you